Okay, it's a great pleasure to uh, invite uh, Jean Rusteno here and welcome her to give a uh, Institute seminar today. Uh, Jean has been working on uh, late blight epidemiology and tracking populations um, and her work really mirrors the work we do here at the Institute on European populations, but uh, Jean adds a, an extra perspective of historical specimens um, and the US populations. And as I say, this mirrors our, our work on European and British blight population tracking. So we're really looking forward to welcoming her in, here today and listening to her seminar. Good morning. I'm really pleased to be here at the James Hutton Institute to talk about my favorite subject, late blight on potatoes. Uh, I've collaborated with the folks here at James Hutton, uh, with uh, David Cook and Paul Birch on uh, grant proposals, and I'm really excited to be here to talk about late blight. I work on the pathogen that caused the Irish potato famine, and my work involves tracking migrations of the pathogen, both historic and modern day spread of the disease. We uh, uh, run a disease surveillance system at North Carolina State University, similar to Euroblight system that uh, Dave Cook uh, manages here in the, in the EU. We track migrations of the pathogen, uh, test fungicide sensitivity, and, and give growers information that can help them manage this disease. I'm also interested in the evolution of the pathogen, where it came from, how it spread, and how we can manage it on a global basis for smallholder farmers that it impacts food security. Late blight is a re-emerging plant disease and it's a threat to global food security. It's not just a historical curiosity from the past. The pathogen still causes hunger issues in many areas of the world, in South America, Central America, and in Africa where smallholder farmers don't have access to fungicides or resistant varieties to control the disease. So it's a, a threat to food security. And the pathogen moves in seed potatoes that are actually exported quite a bit from the EU to different parts of the world. So understanding this disease, managing it so that we can prevent spread in potatoes is uh, very important, not only in the EU and the US, but for smallholder farmers who have to deal with this pathogen when it's imported into their country. My work involves studying both historic and present day outbreaks of late blight. Um, some of the work in my laboratory uh, involved working with historic specimens. It was pioneering work, kind of the first studies to look at outbreak strains of the pathogen and actually identify them in samples from the 1840s. Our lab was involved in the first genome sequencing of historic lineages from the Irish famine, and we have since sequenced about 70 or 80 genomes of this pathogen from historic outbreaks. We've also used microsat uh, analysis to genotype the famine lineage, and that sets a baseline for what the pathogen looked like in the 1840s, and, that, and then we're also looking at uh, lineages, present-day lineages. So uh, we, we're studying how the pathogen changes over time, its evolution. We're also developing new diagnostic tools for identifying the disease using lamp assays and kind of in-field diagnostics that can be used in plant disease clinics in the developing world. And I'm very interested in, at the next phase of my work, um, combining disease surveillance systems from uh, on a global basis. Right now our EU and US systems Aren't, are separate. We'd like to combine those, and that's one reason why I'm here visiting today with the team here at James Hutton. And also, um, you know, managing this disease using novel tools, uh, developing resistance and deploying it so that uh, we can reduce disease incidence. My research involves managing late blight, and Currently, in many areas of the world, particularly eastern North, uh, Western North Carolina, we spray 15 fungicide applications a season to control late blight on tomatoes, and potato growers do the same, weekly applications. If we can reduce pesticide load on potatoes, that would be an important environmental impact of what we do. And in order to do that, we need to understand pathogen lineages, how they respond to fungicides, and also how weather variables impact disease. We're um, collaborating with folks at the University of Florida to test a decision support system that uses weather forecasting to predict when 
to spray rather than spraying weekly. And that saves growers money and it also protects the environment since there's less pesticide used. I'm also very interested in you know, global disease surveillance. Right now we have a disease surveillance system for late blight. I'd like to extend that surveillance system to other pathogens so that we can predict where disease outbreaks are going to occur before they occur. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, we'd like to uh, have a global late blight surveillance system uh, and train more uh, people, build capacity to do quick uh, genotyping and phenotyping so we can ma manage and monitor the pathogen globally.